Hello, so this is the uh, third video in this series. Again, um, all the IB econ diagrams explained. I'm going to try and build a playlist over this academic year of all the diagrams you need. And this one, the focus will be on market equilibrium. And there you go. You have price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis. Remember, price is always on the y-axis, quantity is always on the x-axis, okay? The demand curve is downward sloping, downward sloping. Why? Because the law of demand states that as price rises, quantity demanded falls, ceteris paribus, assuming other things held constant. Okay, that's the law of demand. Notice I'm saying quantity demanded, not demand. Every point, every point on the demand curve is a different combination of price and quantity, not price and demand. The entire curve is the demand curve, but each point is a combination of price and quantity, remember. So as price rises, quantity demanded decreases. That's the law of demand. The supply curve, on the other hand, is upward sloping. As you can see, it is upward sloping. It's a positive slope. Why? Because according to the law of supply, as price rises, quantity supplied rises, ceteris paribus. So remember, price and quantity demanded move in opposite directions, while price and quantity supplied move in the same direction. Okay, Fabius. So the intersection of the demand and the supply curve gives us the equilibrium price, PE, and the equilibrium quantity, QE. Okay, remember, demand is the quantity that consumers are willing and able to buy at a set of prices over a certain period of time. Supply is the quantity of a good or service that producers are willing and able to produce and sell at a set of prices over a certain period of time. Where they intersect, quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. That is the equilibrium quantity. So remember, QE is the quantity where QD, quantity demanded, is equal to QS, quantity supplied. And that is the equilibrium price, the price at which the quantity that consumers are willing and able to buy is where the producers are willing and able to produce and sell. It's the, it's the price where both of these quantities are the same. Okay, so this is the equilibrium diagram. So demand and supply curves forming an equilibrium. I talked about the law of demand, the demand curve, downward sloping versus upward sloping, the law of supply and the supply curve. Now, to understand why this is equilibrium, you need to look at a different set of prices, okay? A price below and the price above. So let's assume for whatever reason, instead of being the market, instead of being at PEQE, the market is at P1. Let's assume the market is at P1. The problem with this price is that at P1, quantity demanded is here because this is where P1 intersects the demand curve, while quantity supplied is here. If you look at the x-axis, QD is greater than QS. Whenever QD is greater than QS, we have a situation of a shortage or excess demand. These are two words to explain or describe the same thing. Okay, so a shortage is a situation where QD is greater than QS because the price in the market is below equilibrium. Okay, now if the market is a free market and there's no government intervention, then the shortage will exert an upward pressure on price, okay? If the market is free and there's no government intervention, that shortage over time will eliminate itself by itself by gradually pushing the price up. As the price gradually rises, quantity demanded gradually decreases, quantity supplied gradually increases until the market reaches 
equilibrium again. So think of equilibrium as like the point of gravity, okay? If left to its own devices, without any government intervention, prices will generally gravitate towards equilibrium. Why? Because if there's a shortage, consumers are willing and able to buy more than what producers are willing and able to sell, that will exert an upward pressure. Price will gradually rise, okay? Now, to measure the shortage, it's QD minus QS. It's this distance here, QD minus QS. All right, what about the opposite situation? What if the price is actually above equilibrium, P2? Here, you have the opposite situation. You have quantity demanded, which is the intersection of P2 and the demand curve. Here, this is QD. And the intersection of P2 and the supply curve is here. This is QS. Here, you have a situation where QS is greater than QD. We call this excess supply or a surplus. The distance, QS minus QD, is the size of the surplus. Okay? Now, a surplus exerts a downward pressure on price, the opposite of a shortage, okay? Because the quantity that producers are willing and able to sell exceeds the quantity that consumers are willing and able to buy, right? So there is some product that no one is buying because the price is too high. So that will exert a downward pressure on price if this market is free from government intervention, okay? In a free market, this will exert a downward pressure on price. Price will gradually fall, which leads to a gradual increase in quantity demanded. Notice I'm saying gradual increase in quantity demanded, not a gradual increase in demand. A gradual increase in quantity demanded. And as price gradually falls, there'll be a gradual decrease in quantity supplied until the market reaches equilibrium again, okay? So this is, there you go, market equilibrium. I talked about the law of demand and the shape of the demand curve, it's downward sloping. The law of supply and the shape of the supply curve, it's upward sloping. How, um, where they intersect, you have equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. I talked about the situation of a shortage when price is below equilibrium. This will lead to QD being higher than QS. Notice I'm saying quantity demanded greater than QS. I'm not saying demand greater than supply, okay? I, I want you to get used to using the words quantity demanded, quantity supplied, because you only use the words demand and supply when you're talking about shifts, okay? When any of the curves shift, but here there are no shifts. It's just a situation where price is below equilibrium. So quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. This will exert an upward pressure on price. A surplus, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. This will exert a downward pressure on price. A surplus happens when price is above equilibrium. Okay, there you go. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please press that like button because it helps the algorithm understand that it's a helpful video that helps this video find the people who need it. Number one, number two, subscribe. Number three, if you want exclusive content and help with um, more IB Econ topics, you can join the channel as a member or just say thank you by buying me a coffee. Um, have a great rest of your week and I will see you next week. Bye.